however much Saddam Hussein may rail at George Bush and those arrayed against him, George Bush is choosing his words this day very carefully. Indeed, he says, so far there has been great success, but in a meeting with congressional leaders just a short time ago here at the White House, the president warned against any premature sense of euphoria. As I will not be commenting on the ups and downs, there will be some downs, or the uh, trauma of the moment. There's a lot of trauma of the moment, uh, but I think it is fair to say and I will be repeating this to the leaders here, that uh, we are pleased with the way things have gone so far. Uh, we are determined to finish uh, what we've set out to do. But I, I, I just think, for procedural reasons, I'd like you all to know that I'm not going to be trying to do uh, briefings uh, from the White House on, uh, on the details of the operations over there. I have full confidence and our Secretary of Defense, and in our able Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, and in, of course, in our General, General Schwarzkopf. So for the future, uh, though I will be in touch with the American people, I, I think it's better to leave the, the uh, details of the operation to the briefings over there. And uh, of course, I'll be available for questions from time to time. At the conclusion of his meeting with congressional leaders, the president received understated endorsement from the Democrats and overt endorsement from the Republicans. He was meeting with Senate Republican leader Bob Dole and uh, the ranking Republican in the House, Bob Michael, along with George Mitchell and Tom Foley, the leading Democrats. There will be resolutions of support and encouragement for the troops in the field from Capitol Hill. Here at the White House, White House spokesman Marlon Fitzwater says the president was, ju was up just after 5 o'clock this morning, came over to the Oval Office, then took a solitary walk around the South Grounds before visiting the Situation Room himself to hear some of the early reports from the field personally. He will be meeting with the Cabinet later this afternoon. I'm Frank Sesno, CNN reporting live from the White House. Frank, thank you. Of course, uh, quite a number of pilots were involved in the most, uh, mostly successful raids last night on Iraq. We are going to hear now from one of the U.S. pilots who was involved in that raid last night. Let's listen. At about uh, 3.50, like I said, we started an uh, engagement. I got the contact that AWACS calls out as a hostile chasing uh, my number three man. And at about the same time, I'm turning back around towards the uh, east. Uh, when I turn back around, I get a contact on a, uh, on a contact that isn't squawking our IFS, so when I lock this guy up, I can tell that he's not a, uh, a friendly airplane. Uh, uh, comes to find, come to find out that uh, it's an F-1. He's at about 8,000 feet headed west towards Baghdad, towards my number three and four uh, men also, and uh, we EID him as hostile. About 12 miles, I take a uh, Fox-1, a radar missile. Um, everything's looking good. Uh, thinking about taking another Fox 1, but uh, no kind of uh, interference or anything like that, so I just let uh, one Fox 1 go. And about uh, four miles in front of me, uh, get a huge fireball. Actually, actually, I get the missile coming off, which is a big flash coming off. Uh, get a huge fireball, and uh, the airplane blows up. When the uh, airplane blows in a big, huge fireball, pieces get scattered everywhere. Uh, my number two man and I, we turn back south to get away from that initially. We come back up and trying to find, uh, hopefully he has a wingman or something else. Actually, hopefully not, but uh, we're looking for his wingman up there. Uh, see, if he, see if he has anyone else coming up with them. We can't really find anyone else. AWACS is calling the uh, pitcher clean. Actually, no, air, no uh, uh, Iraqi threats airborne at that time anymore. We continue to sweep and uh, cap until all the wild weasels, all the EF-111s and uh, and the F-111s, F-15s are out of the strike area. Once they're out of the strike area, then we egress also. Uh, when we're going up there, um, as we start to push, we can see the uh, populous areas out in front of us, and uh, AAA starts wherever there was populous, wherever there were city lights, town lights, or uh, lights out there where a bunch of people were at. AAA starts with tracers. Uh, you can see them coming up, shooting at you. We're egressing up there high, so uh, we're not really worried about that until we get in the cap location. Then we have to get down a little bit lower, and we're a little bit worried about that. Did you, ever, did you ever get a chance to see the, uh, the enemy you shot down? Did you have him actually within, within your uh, eyesight when you fired the missile? Uh, no, not when I fired the missile, no. When he blew up, I could see a piece of the airplane blowing up. Um, obviously, it was at night. I couldn't see if a parachute or anything like that. It was a huge fireball. I don't anticipate anybody getting out of that. It could have happened. What, was he up there by himself? Uh, I, 
I think that he had a wingman with him, but we couldn't find him, and AWACS was calling the pitcher clean right after that. So uh, if he was, if he did have a wingman on him, uh, he either dispersed and tried to go back to the base he took off out of or go somewhere else, but uh, he certainly wasn't around the area for, uh, he wasn't a, a factor threat for any of the package or ourselves. So um, as we're going up there, you can see all the light, the city is just lit up with a spark, looks like a bunch of sparkles just going off in, across the entire city. The AAA was incredible. Uh, we got lit up by a couple Sams, uh, means that they were looking at us. Um, we didn't actually see any SAM launches that I uh, that I saw out there. Although there's a lot of other things going on, there could have been uh, maybe one. Um, other than that, we pretty much did our job. Took the air-to-air -air threat out, even though it was limited. They don't like to fly at night. Don't have the capabilities that we have. We're you know just just superior technology, and uh, they can't come up at night and uh, and, and do what we think, can. Uh, Captain Steve Tate, one of the U.S. pilots involved in last night's raids. Our comprehensive coverage of the war in the Gulf will continue here on CNN. Stay with us. Okay. Captain, Captain, thank you. Let's put on quite a show.